Since the last uh, progress report, we finished the fabric and we're into painting, so that required uh, setting up the paint booth at the uh, front part of the, the garage and uh, uh, MacGyvering a uh, type of a turntable uh, to be able to put the small pieces uh, that required painting and being able to spin it around rather than having to walk around. Um, we set it up so that we could uh, seal off um, with plastic and to be able to uh, lift that plastic up somehow to be able to, to, to uh, get out and circulate around and also allow for heat to, get, to come in uh, to keep the temperature uh, adequate for paint drying. Uh, the ventilation is uh, produced with a, a large furnace blower in the window uh, and that uh, takes care of all of the overspray and it draws air from the main part of the garage uh, through a, a filter that's uh, framed into the plastic. So uh, the whole idea is that uh, there's no overspray uh, that uh, goes in the main part where uh, all of the uh, fuselage and the wings uh, are situated and uh, you know that, that could be uh, damaged with the overspray. Now, of course, the overspray uh, from, uh, you know, the small rattle cans that we use, uh, this over here is uh, just uh, a sanding primer that's uh, put on the nose bowl. Uh, it's not a, a major concern uh, with the blower, but the overspray from uh, the spray gun is another story with the uh, you know, the, the, the types of uh, paint that, that we're going to be using. Which uh, brings us to the personal protective equipment story. Um, I had a mask and goggles and a paint suit uh, that I used for spraying the epoxy primer and top coat on the nose bowl here, but uh, planning on doing the same with all of the metal parts and I did uh, prime with the epoxy primer uh, the nose bowl and put a first coat of uh, top coat of epoxy uh, paint uh, not successfully I have to admit here you see that uh, there were speckles but the more serious problem was uh, a leak in the uh, seal of uh, the mask uh, which uh, had me breathe in uh, the fumes and had very serious consequences. So um, I immediately ordered um, an air, a, a clean air uh, system uh, that would give me a mask that uh, uh, would protect me from all of those fumes. I had opted for the full face mask option of that of the system uh, to make sure that there was no chance of any leakage around the nose with uh, uh, just a, a nose or just a mouth uh, protector. The system comes with a 40-foot uh, air hose uh, along with a, an air blower uh, that has to be installed outside of the painting area so that it can draw clean air and pump it into the mask.
you can adjust the airflow on the blower and to be able to gauge uh, that airflow uh, there's a, an air gauge that can be connected at the end of the hose uh, so you could uh, tell how much air or how strong uh, the air current is that goes to the mask and there, uh, there's a, an adjustment on, on the blower itself. And here's where it started going sideways on me. The fa full face mask, which is a beautiful piece of equipment, I cannot wear with my glasses on because it doesn't seal properly on my face. So I have a beautiful piece of equipment that I can't wear. As luck would have it, bad, good or otherwise, there's also a hood available to, that, that is compatible with this system. So uh, I ordered the hood. And as it turns out, uh, the hood works well and I can wear my glasses inside and with the airflow, um, my glasses don't fog up. And that, my friends, is my convoluted PPE story.